This camera is fantastic. However, it's got one very ironic flaw. This video is sponsored by KEH Camera. YouTube, what's good? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about this little guy right here. This is one of my newest camera purchases. This is the Olympus XA. And this camera is an absolute powerhouse. It's crazy to say that considering how small it is. I mean, you can compare it to my face right here. It's teeny, it's very thin, slim profile. And the actual kind of surface area is very, very small. It fits in the palm of your hand, it fits in absolutely any pocket you've got, whether in your pants, your jacket, you name it, it fits everywhere. And that's exactly why I bought this camera. Uh, quick disclaimer, the Olympus XA is one of several cameras in the XA lineup. So this specific one is the XA, and that's important to distinguish because the XA2, 3, etc., uh, they don't have the same exact features of this. Um, the, the big features, not just kind of small things. Uh, for example, like this is a rangefinder camera um, as opposed to other ones which are kind of scale focusing. So anyways, if you like this one that I'm about to describe, make sure you look at the XA specifically. Um, so what is this? Like I just said, this is a rangefinder camera. So, you know, we slide open the cover there, rangefinder camera, and you've got your rangefinder patch through the viewfinder in there. You've got your focus control knob right here. And then this camera actually has a meter. Um, and with that meter, you also get automatic exposure via aperture priority. So all of those things I just mentioned, um, those are, that, that's very functional. That's a lot of stuff to have in a camera, especially one of this size. And that's what makes this camera so special. You shoot 35 millimeter film. You've got a rangefinder that you can control the focus with. You've got your ability to set your ISO from the different options right there. And then of course you've got a meter inside so you don't have to pick your exposure. Um, you don't have exposure compensation here so you can't force it to do plus one, plus two, or minus one, minus two, but there is one compensation mode built into the camera that you can choose, which is down here. And that says plus 1.5 for backlight. So if your subject is backlit, you put that setting in there and the camera will expose a little bit more or longer, let's say, to allow more light on your subject. Um, so to summarize, this camera has a lot of electronic functionality, a meter, and you can control basically everything else. This puts this in direct competition just at the highest level with any rangefinder camera that exists out there. For example, I have a Canon P, which I absolutely love, but that camera does not have a meter. And that's okay, it doesn't have to have a meter, but not having a meter changes the way you use the camera compared to this one. This is almost like a point and shoot, even though it's not a point and shoot at all. Somehow I forgot to mention one really important thing, and that is that this camera has aperture priority. That's basically a feature you will not see on almost any rangefinder camera out there. A lot of rangefinder cameras have meters, but very, very few can actually change your shutter speed settings based on whatever aperture you select and the meter reading. That's why this camera is special because it has some of these point and shoot features, but in a manual rangefinder body where you can control pretty much everything. That is a massive feature and that's exactly why I got this camera. Of course, in addition to the small size. In terms of what this fulfills, in terms of your needs, this fulfills a lot and that's exactly why I got it. So everything I just said is fantastic. Those are all the good things about this camera. Um, and my copy specifically works very well, but the one problem that I have with this camera is probably the main reason why I got it, um, and that is its small size. At first I was thinking having a tiny camera like this means I can bring it everywhere. And that's 100% correct. I've been bringing it literally everywhere, and it's a fantastic backup camera to have in my bag because I shoot a lot with the Hasselblad, as you saw in other videos, um, but only 12 shots there. So when I, when I run out of film there, and I don't feel like loading an entirely brand new roll of film, um, I just pull this out and there's always a film in here so I can shoot whatever's in here and continue to get photos in whatever scenario I'm in. Um, but the size is a problem as well because it's really hard to handle this camera. Um, my hands aren't giant but they're definitely not small and to hold this camera first of all is kind of awkward. I just kind of hold it with fingers like as you see here you know um, as opposed to getting a good grip on it because there's nowhere to grip here. It's not built to have a grip because otherwise I would make it bigger. So I kind of hold it weirdly like this with my fingers and it changes every time I use it. Um, and then when I'm focusing, not only is the rangefinder patch in here tiny, again, because of the small size of this camera, um, that makes it hard to see what you're trying to focus on sometimes. But then the knob to control the rangefinder is just this little thing right here. And luckily it's, it has a bit of a grip to it because um, it's kind of like serrated on the edge there, the plastic, it's not smooth, but it's still very small. So just look at how awkward this looks when I go like this. Got it to my face, and now to focus, I need to go like this. And like, I can't even do it with the pad of my finger. I have to use my nail to kind of catch on there. 
Um, that's not fun. And I'm very slow when I use this camera because of that. Uh, oftentimes I'm second guessing my focus. And if I'm doing a portrait of some random person in the street, it's kind of awkward. So the size is becoming a bit of a, an issue and it's kind of annoying to be honest with you. Um, I just haven't decided if it's annoying enough where it outweighs all the great stuff about this camera. So that's kind of the biggest challenge with this camera. Another thing, real quick, a message from the sponsor of this video, KEH. This is April and it's Earth Month, which is a perfect thing to talk about when talking about KEH, given that they're committed to promoting a circular life cycle for all of their photography gear. Buying used camera gear is amazing because you as a consumer get what you want and you get it without creating new waste streams by buying brand new products. And fortunately, KEH is a great place to buy used cameras because you get such great products and you get really amazing service as well. They review and grade each and every single camera, allowing you to choose whatever option suits your budget best. You will know exactly what condition your equipment is before buying it. Make sure to use the affiliate link down below to support this channel and to make your next purchase at KEH. Another thing I don't like, which isn't a challenge, but it is kind of something that ticks me off a little bit, is the actual shutter release button right there, the trigger, that red button. Um, when you press it, you barely feel like you've pressed it. There's, you can't sink into it. You don't have that really satisfying mechanical push that you get with basically every film camera that exists. This almost feels like a little pad that you just touch. And let's see, like I barely touched that and the shutter went off. Um, that's not a deal breaker. That's not a bad thing. It doesn't mess up your photos, but the experience of taking a photo is not as satisfying with this as it is with other cameras. And one of the reasons I shoot film is because I love the cameras. They're mechanical for the most part. And using them really gives you a nice sensation of using a piece of gear, something that was engineered and has some craftsmanship. This was very well engineered, not dissing that at all, but that shutter button, um, because it was made to be small and just kind of fit in here in low profile, it's just not a satisfying button to press. Um, so I'm curious, tell me in the comments, because I know a lot of people have this camera. How much do you love this camera from zero to 10? Because uh, right now, I think I'm at a seven, six, seven, something like that. Um, and again, it's because the usability of this, um, while being very, very efficient and, and useful overall, um, the size of it makes it a bit cumbersome, make it, makes it a bit awkward, um, and I'm fumbling around. One big thing that I can't do with this camera that I do with basically all, the, all my other cameras is usually when I'm going to do a portrait, if I want to get really beautiful bokeh around the subject and focus and get in closer, I'll just set the focus to the minimum distance. So I do this on my Hasselblad all the time, for example. I'll turn the lens all the way to the minimum distance, which I think is three feet or just under three feet. So I'll pre-focus it and then I'll put the camera to my eye and then I'll physically move forward closer to my subject until the image kind of goes from out of focus and, lo and is locked in into just the right focus. Very easy to do on an SLR camera because you see the exact thing you're taking a photo of. But with the rangefinder, when you do that, you're theoretically you're looking for the patch to be out of focus initially, and as you get closer to your subject, it'll start to move, move, move until it's right on top of them. It's so hard to do with this camera because of how tiny that patch is. So I've done it a few times and I just keep missing focus. Um, and with rangefinders, you're supposed to not miss focus because it's supposed to be very easy and very obvious unless your rangefinder is not calibrated. And this one's definitely calibrated. I promise you, most of my photos are in focus, except when I try to focus like that by moving my physical body closer to the subject. So it's a shame I can't do that because I do that a lot. And it's just one of the techniques I use when getting portraits of people. That's my love and hate take on this camera. Um, really beautiful camera though, extremely well engineered. The engineer who designed this is very famous. One of the Olympus kind of classic film engineers from back in the day. This is the photo right here. Um, this guy's a legend. This camera is incredibly made. It's very smart. It's so capable. So kudos to him and, and to the legacy of this camera. But um, I think I'm just gonna have to force myself to love this camera because it's too good for me not to like it. And it's too usable and too functional and too easy in terms of carrying around for me to not like it, for me to abandon it. So I'm gonna try to force myself to, to keep this around, but sometimes I get a bit frustrated with it. All right, y'all, that's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, comment down below if you have this camera, if you have any experience with it, and let me know how you like it. All right, y'all, to the next video. I'm out.